Okay, so now I'm going to do part two of section 3.5 on the graphing of cube roots and square roots. And this time we're going to look at how to translate these functions. We're going to translate them horizontally and we're going to translate them vertically. So let's take a look at this slide. Um, and so Basically, we've looked at the parent function already, and so I'm going to get this going here, make sure my thing's going, oh, I've got to turn this on. Um, we've looked at the parent function, which would be these portions right here, you see? That would be the traditional parent function, so what we now want to do is figure out, well, what is this? portion right here do and what does this do so let me talk about those briefly here this portion right here is what causes a horizontal shift now the shift will either be to the left all right or it will be to the right okay and there's a secret that I've always used to find out which way it goes and so what I do is I just take this part that's inside the square root or inside this cube root and I set that part equal to zero. Like for example, we might have a function that looks like this. y is equal to the square root of x minus 5. Okay, the horizontal shift I want to tell you right now is it's not equal to negative 5. What you need to do is set this part equal to zero. So you take x minus 5, set it equal to zero. And then solve for x. So we add 5 here and add 5 here. And in this case, we get x is equal to 5. And so that tells you the direction on a number line to shift your parent function. Now remember the parent function for the square root would have been something that looks like that. Okay. Well, this shift here causes everything, this parent function, whatever it is, it causes it to move five units to the right. And so the new graph is going to be here. <clears throat> and that's what this portion right here causes. It causes a horizontal shift. Okay, well, now we deal with this portion. This portion right here causes a vertical shift. And the nice thing about this portion is that the vertical shift is, is exactly as it's stated right here. So if it's a plus 3, well then the whole graph goes up 3 units. Okay. And so in this case, the graph would go up here. And it's translated 3 units upwards. Now here's the thing. We have a combination of shifts. So we have a shift that's horizontal, and we have a shift that is vertical. So in this case, let's take a look at what would happen. Um, let's say my function I'm dealing with is y is equal to the square root of x minus 5, and then plus 3. Okay, so what would that, what would that do to my graph? Well, first of all, as this advises you here sketch the graph of the parent function the parent function is going to include this a out in front so if 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 you had this function here you would graph this portion after you graph the parent function then you just apply these shifts there's a horizontal shift and a vertical shift so in this case my parent function would be the square root of x okay and we've seen that before. The square root of x does look like something. We plug in 0, we plug in 1, and we plug in 4, you know, and we've got square root of 4 is 2, so this curve kind of looks like that. And once again, we can talk about the domain and the range. But now let's apply the shifts. Um, we just showed here that this one is going to have a horizontal shift 5 units. But we also have to deal with this one. Uh, it has a vertical shift of 3 units. So 
what we do is basically move this point. We go one, two, three, four, five, and up three, which would put it right there. And then all of these special points would also move over five and up three. So that would put that second point right there. And then over five, one, two, three, four, five, and up three. And, um, and so then the final point, this point, would go over five also. So, uh, basically, if you had drawn this right, you would have a mu function that looks just like the first one. So basically what's happened is that this has gone over five units this way, and then it's gone up three units that way. Over five, and then up three. And then you reproduce the same graph. So it can be pretty easy, it's not too hard. Um, but one thing you should be aware of is that this changes the domain and the range. So let's take a look at one of these examples and then we'll be done. Uh, the cube roots work the same way, the horizontal shifts and the vertical shifts. You still start out with the parent function. So I'm just going to do one example here. Uh, let's try this one. So according to my suggestion uh, on the previous slide, we want to start out by just looking at this parent function right here. So what I'm going to do is uh, choose some x's and y's. This is kind of what we were doing on the first part during the first four problems of your study guide. So you pick some values that would be easy to use. How about if we go with zero, and we go with one, we go with two, and maybe we should go with four. <clears throat> those would be nice, easy values to use because the square root of all those values would be easy. Now keep in mind, right now, we are graphing just three square root of x. Okay, that's what we're going to be graphing. Okay, so when you put in a 0 here, you get 0. When you put in a 1 there, you get square root of 1 is 1. And multiplied by 3, you get 3. And by the way, we're just ignoring this part for a few moments. When you put in a 2 there, oh, that's not so nice, is it? Probably should take that number off. Uh, 4, square root of 4 is easy. That's 2 times 3, which would give me 6. So that one I'd have to just use my calculator. In any event, <coughs> the graph of this parent part is 0, 0, 1, 3, and then 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, it looks like that. So we have a graph that's our typical square root and it's being kind of stretched kind of goes like that. Okay, so there you have it. So this is like 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6. Now sometimes it is convenient to renumber your axes according to some convenient step. Like you can go up by 2's, you can go up by 3's, and so on and so forth if you want for some of these problems. Okay, well that being said, um, to graph this function, now we just need to apply the shifts. So the horizontal shift, I'm just going to write hs, we just set this part equal to 0. So x plus 2 equal to 0. Move the 2 over, we get x is equal to negative 2. So that's going to cause things to shift that way, 2 units. Now this one is a is exactly as it stated. It's a vertical shift and it says to go down four. So the point is you apply both of these shifts at the same time. So let's go over to, we're going to move each of these points. We're going to start by going over left two. So if I go over two and then down four, it puts that point right there. There's that first point. It goes over two and down four. Where is this point going to be? It's going to be over 2 and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Puts it right here. Where is this point going to be? It's going to be left 2 and then down 4. 
Well, so there you have it. We just reconnect the dots like this. Okay. Now, be careful here. Uh, when we did the domain for this one, we would have said domain. We would have said, okay, x is greater than or equal to zero. All right. And the range would have been very similar. We would have said y is greater than or equal to zero. But this function has been translated now. So the domain and range has also been translated. And if you think about it, the domain for this new one is going to be easy because what did we do? We just shifted two to the left. So that means our domain needs to shift to the left, two to the left. And so x now is going to be uh, greater than or equal to negative two instead of zero. And if you take a look, I mean this is where this is where the function starts. It starts right here at negative two and goes this way. Now by x equal to negative two, we're talking about the graph at negative two, which in this case would be a range value of negative four. So looking at the graph now, x's go this way forever, and the y value starts right here and goes forever going upwards like this, you see? So you have a range that has been shifted down. So the range for our new function is just slightly different. Y is greater than negative four. Looking at the graph should, should show you and guide your thinking here. This is at negative four. Negative four is right here. Negative two is right here. And this graph is going up forever, going in, in the vertical in the vertical direction. So it's also going forever in the horizontal direction. So starting from this point here, which is at x equal to negative two. Okay, well that being said, these problems are just a little bit harder. You have to apply a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. And then you need to shift the domain and the range as well. Okay, you should be set to do the last two problems on the study guide. And like I said, tomorrow we'll work on the book assignment in class. Try to get that all done. And that should wrap up section 3.5.